All right, in this video, I want to talk about L'Hopital's rule and what are called, you know, growth rates, relative growth rates of functions. And typically what is hap what will happen is they'll ask a question like, which function goes to infinity faster? So, for example, if you think about y equals x, you know, y equals x is just our kind of our 45-degree uh, line goes through the origin. y equals ln of x is down here, you know, uh, our little logarithm curve. They both get arbitrarily large as x gets large, but clearly um, y equals x is going to get larger much faster than y equals ln of x. And the way that you can show this with L'Hopital's rule, the basic idea is, so I'm going to restrict it so that our functions are both positive uh, for some number for some, for all x values that are greater than or equal to some real number. And again, all I'm saying is eventually they go positive and they stay positive. And the only reason why I'm putting that restriction on there is a lot of times that's what they'll ask is which one goes to infinity faster. And also, you know, if you start looking at, um, you know, if you start letting them become negative, you know, the limits can still work out to be infinity, but you know, maybe they're both going to negative infinity. So I'll let you think about what happens when, you know, the signs are allowed to be, you know, maybe both negative, for example. The conclusions are pretty much exactly the same with some slight variations. Okay, they may be going to negative infinity instead of positive infinity is what I'm saying. So, But in this case, it basically says if the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x over g of x is infinity, it says, well, for this limit to work out to be infinity, the number on top must be bigger than the number on the bottom. Okay, and if that's happening, well, it simply says that f of x is getting bigger faster than the function in the denominator. If the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x over g of x is 0, well, that means the number in the bottom, again, if they're both going to infinity, for this number to get close to 0, it says the number in the bottom must be much bigger um, compared to the number in the, uh, the top. And that would imply that g of x is going to infinity more quickly. Typically, you're going to get one of these two situations on these problems. It could happen that the limit's a constant. And then in that case, it basically says f of x is going to infinity k times as quickly as g of x. I don't think you'll see this so much. So <clears throat> let's look at one example here. Let's compare the growth rates of, say, e to the x and y equals x to the n, where n is a positive integer. So I've kind of graphed a very little bit here of e to the x here. So e to the x is, remember, our exponential function. And, okay, I've got, you know, x to the 100. x to the 100 gets pretty big pretty quickly. It actually overtakes e to the x really, you know, uh, for, for small values of x. Kind of the question is, though, you know, if you think about, you know, say x to the 100, uh, let's see if I can make my picture here look okay. So maybe here's e to the x. Maybe it's smaller for a little while, right? So there's e to the x, and here's x to the 100. The question is, uh, you know, as x starts getting larger and larger and larger, maybe e to the x actually catches up and overtakes it. You know, so that's the question. What's, what's happening? Um, which one eventually uh, kind of gets to uh, infinity faster? Okay, well, again, we're just going to basically start using L'Hopital's rule and just start uh, just trying to see which one of these, uh, these uh, conclusions we reach here. So I'm going to look at the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x over x to the n. And again, if n is some positive integer, well, um, as x gets large, e to the x is going to be infinity x to the n, um, you know, if you plug a large number in and raise it to the nth power, that's also going to go to infinity. Well, this is an indeterminate form, which means we could use L'Hopital's rule. And in this case, well, the limit as x goes to infinity, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And then we'll get n times uh, x to the n minus 1. Okay, so depending on what your power is, either... You know, what you started with, either n minus 1 is um, greater than 0, or n minus 1 is going to equal 0. And if n minus 1 equals 0, well then x to the n minus 1 is just going to equal uh, a constant. Namely, it's going to equal the constant 1. <clears throat> okay, so the idea is... Um, so if n, if your if your exponent is still a power um, one or higher, again a positive integer one or bigger, well, okay, you, you would still have infinity over infinity. Okay, 
Um, but eventually what's going to happen is we can take another derivative, okay? We could keep taking derivatives, derivatives, derivatives. Eventually what's going to happen is, eventually what's going to happen is, you know, at our next derivative, notice we would get, um, so at our next derivative, Notice again on the top we would simply get, if we use L'Hopital's rule, we would just get, well, e to the x in the numerator. And then, well, we would have n times n minus 1 times x raised to the n minus 2. Um, and again, either n minus 2 now equals the exponent of 0, in which case this is a constant. Or what's going to happen is um, this exponent will still be, you know, positive integer 1 or higher. Assuming that happens, we could use L'Hopital's rule again. And what I'm trying to point out, point out is, notice eventually uh, what we're going to get in the denominator. Eventually what we're going to get out front is we're going to get a factorial. Okay? Um, if you keep doing derivatives over and over and over and over, I mean, imagine if you started with a tenth power. You'd have the tenth power times the ninth power. Now we would do another derivative, so we would have it multiplied by the eighth uh, power. So all that's happening here is eventually we're going to get down to a factorial, and then we'll have x to the 0 power, okay, after taking enough derivatives. Well, okay, if that happens, well, we've got e to the x over n factorial. x to the 0 is simply equal to 1. And now the idea is, well, n factorial, this is just some constant. It could be a, you know, a really huge constant. If we started with x to the 100, this would be 100 factorial. But again, as x goes to infinity, e to the x is still going to be infinity on top. Okay, it's going to go get arbitrarily large. This may be a, a, a big constant in the denominator, but hey, it's still just some number. It's some constant all the same. Well, if you take a number that gets arbitrarily large over some constant, that's simply going to give us infinity. And now, in this case, what we've shown is we've now justified that e to the x goes to infinity faster than really any polynomial. Okay, notice we just used x to the n, but you could really justify um, that this actually is the case for any polynomial, right? I mean, who cares if you have extra terms instead of just x to the n? If there's smaller degree, you know, suppose this was x to the 100 power. If this was x to the 100 power and you had some other stuff left over, by the time we get to this step, again, uh, eventually after doing a lot of derivatives, this is simply what we'll be left with. So this is the basic idea. Again, to maybe go back to our very first example, you know, we could justify, so we said which goes to infinity faster, you know, uh, y equals x or ln of x. Well, again, right now this is infinity over infinity. If we use L'Hopital's rule, well, the derivative of x is just 1. In the denominator, the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. Well, we could always just do a little bit of algebra. 1 over 1 over x would just give us x. Again, you know, flip and multiply your fractions. And as x goes to infinity, well, x goes to infinity. And again, what that implies in this case is x goes to infinity faster than does ln of x. Okay, so that's really all that's going on. Okay, so again, it all just kind of comes back to... Da, 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 it all just comes back really to um, kind of this result. And again, you know, maybe they're both going to negative infinity. You know, bo both of your functions could have been going to negative infinity. The limit would still work out to be positive infinity. But in that case, if that happened, it just means that the, 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 the function in the, num the numerator is in that case going to negative infinity more quickly. So if you allow the signs to change, um, you know, those would kind of be the implications. But again, most of the time, I think when you see these problems, they'll just ask about, you know, the functions will be positive, and usually they'll say which one gets biggest the fastest. Just do L'Hopital's rule. You're kind of looking for one of these two things to happen.